of the police department that I only had 10 seconds worth of interaction with her. I couldn't have did and said all of that what she said. And y'all know it because Brady come from the back room when you was with Scott, B.B., and Josh. You called me Mr. Early at home. And I was on my way to Charles Winfrey's daughter's funeral at False Avenue. And you said, may I put you on speakerphone? I'm like, who's calling? Donnell Early. I thought I was a big timer, getting a call from the big time emergency manager. But little did I know you was going to say, turn in your garage door opener. Little did I know you was going to try to limit my freedom of speech. Little did I know that wasn't a big time call. That was a knock me down call. That was the embarrass me publicly call with a fraudulent affidavit from, from um, Sherry Estep. See, I know fraud. And then you put in the public arena about police personnel. I said, Lord have mercy, I'm scared as hell. Because when the police start lying on you with fraudulent affidavits, I'm still waiting on my freedom of information request, Mr. Bate. The law said you got five days to give me that video. And then if you don't give it to me in five days, you can take 10 days and you can say we need more time. But after 15 days, Lord have mercy, have you seen the video, Mr. Early? because we didn't have no interaction with her like what she said in that fraudulent affidavit. The same emergency order number three, which your city attorney guy is saying emergency manager order number three. You're trying to stifle me, and that's the fraudulent affidavit attached to that. When somebody attaches an affidavit to an emergency order to strip my powers, that's premised on the affidavit being false. We ain't cross-examined that affidavit. So I got to save myself. See, if I'm scared of fraudulent police stuff, and I'm scared of colleagues who don't even talk to me, but stand with an emergency manager to violate me, then I got to talk before something happened to me. See, we had a person named Fred Tucker. He ended up somewhere in Ohio. I don't fear no man. I only fear God. And I've been threatened, my life has been threatened over the holiday. And when I come to a council meeting, and I know Robert's rules, and when I know that the UAW took my money and Scott Kincaid worked for the UAW, and then people come at me, put money in my ward against me, try to strip my First Amendment rights, freedom of speech, and you can't do it, because I ain't never lost the political strategy. See, I can put the cameras around me, Mr. Early, and call the White House of the United States and ask to talk to a Democratic president named Mr. Barack Obama. And I can tell him that it's an emergency in Flint and I feel threatened. And then when I, Mr. Barack Obama, find out that this is Eric Mays and I'm really an elected city council person, elected by the people of the city of Flint, we believe that these votes mean something. You know how many absentee ballots I've done and assisted people with in this city? Thousands of them. You check November 2012, the people voted for an ounce of weed or less. It passed the ballot in the city of Flint. Colorado is wide open. We ain't lying. We ain't scared. See, you got to understand this. It's more important for me to tell the truth about who I am than to let y'all fool around and try to discredit me. My father was Pastor Mays. My mother, 82 years old. When the death threats came in, my power was off on Russell Street. I was over her house. I forgot where I was at. I went to cussing and telling them to get off of my phone. Don't you threaten me. I ain't scared of no man. And my mama went to crying and praying. I'm not going to play games with Peter Bade. I'm not going to play games with you, Mr. Kincaid. And Joshua told me that you wasn't going to be in it. When it's three or more council people, that's an illegal meeting. It's a violation of the Open Meetings Act. I don't care what you do as the legislative branch, Mr. Early, but let me say this. When you act as the legislative branch to discipline an elected council person, you show can be acting as the executive branch. When you act as the legislative branch in cahoots with three council persons, you're subject to the Open Meetings Act. Circuit Court has jurisdiction. That emergency order number three can be invalidated while your lawyer sits up here, and I call him your lawyer, 
because if I had full power, I would call for a public hearing and ask for his removal. See, this guy been fooling us for a long time. But remember, I'm still live in Netherkins Court because before Mike Brown left, I subpoenaed him and had him swore in. He said, I told Peter Bade to follow the guidelines that was already in place. And Mr. Bade changed it to a three-minute rule. It's the reason that I asked. Is the charter still in place? It's a reason that I ask, is Robert Rules in effect? It's a reason that I ask, is the council rules in play? Because without rules and order, I don't know how to act. Now, you're lucky that I'm a civilized, intelligent man, because guess what? Remember what happened in Iraq and Libya? The people was tired of it. They didn't like a dictator. We sent the military to Iraq and Libya to restore democracy. Democracy is defined as you vote for people and they represent you. Flint, Detroit, Pontiac, and Ben Harbor, black folks is acting civilized. You know, sometimes they start coming out the house. I'm a leader in this community. I represent one of the most dangerous wards in the country per capita in the most dangerous city in the country per capita. I look killers in the eye, and I tell them, put that gun down. But when I got scared in 87, the laws wasn't the same. You could wear a gun now, but you couldn't wear them then. Don't y'all bag me up in the corner, because I'm a full-grown man before I was an elected politician, and I'm scared. I'm scared of y'all, not physically. I'm scared of you politically. And when I get scared politically, I talk like this. I get arrested like this. You remember the story about King and Matt? Oh, it's funny, see, when you talk nonviolent, it gets funny. That's what happened to King. Mr. Early, I wanted you to stay here. See, you got all kind of people in this community. But when we nonviolent and we God-fearing man and we recite, and when we recite scripture like Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth and sixth verse, trust in God with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways and he will direct my political path. It ain't no joke. There's so many pastors right now in the first ward that support me. It's pastors from here to Detroit. It's almost like when we say go. People can protest. People can stand in front of City Hall. I can stand out there by myself with an American flag and get pressed. I'm not showboating. I'm asking that you check it out. If that affidavit from Sharia staff is fraudulent, remove that emergency manager order three off of my back. I demand that you check it out. See, due process mean that if somebody put a fraudulent affidavit on my back, give me the right to cross-examine them. This city council should bring serious staff right here, put her under oath, and ask her that what she say happened in that affidavit happened. Oh, I read Maxine's um, affidavit. It's 90% true with a little subjectivity, and serious staff is 90% wrong. See, I can understand, Maxine, she works for you. She said 8,000 a week, I said 7,000 a week. You mad because I, I don't believe in emergency managers. See, Scott and them, they voted to bring y'all in. Neely and Sargentson voted against it. You can't change the way I talk. You can't change the way I believe. What I said that Maxine misquoted in her affidavit, I say you make about 14,000 a month, 7,000 every two weeks. See, I make $215 every two weeks. I'm not in it for the money, what I said. I said, if I made $7,000 every two weeks, I would give my girlfriend $3,000. I would put $2,000 in the bank and go to the casino with the other $2,000. That's what I said, and that's what I meant. Do you know money ain't a thing? Money ain't a thing. And I said that you and Mike Brown wasn't trying to fix nothing because the minute you fix it, you ain't got no check. You got to go. I said that I can, get I can get revenue generating in 60 to 90 days. I said I can put people to work. I said I can show you the hot spots in my ward where killers at and guns at, and I could put undercover people in there and clean them out. This ain't no game. 
So I'm going to end up by saying this. Don't change the rules of the game when Eric Mays get elected. Don't change the rules. I've been watching this stuff for 30, day, for 30 years, not 30 days. Peter Bade and Scott Kincaid want to change the rules. See, we've seen that as black folks for years. The minute we get in the game, the rules change. You know, they move the goalposts. Never before have the council been told how and when to speak until Eric Mays paid attention to people last council meeting. Barbara Griffin Wilson, you spoke about that lawsuit with Charles Young. We know about it. Quincy Murphy, did you get the half an hour meeting that I requested they set up with Howard Prop? Remember that last time? This guy said it was a drug dealer, but come to find out he was the landlord vice president association guy. I met him and gave him my card. Call me. Johnny Billings, you exactly right. I tried to refer that in water main break. And remember... Johnny, you hang in there because I'm going to represent you and it's going to be a heck of a time getting me out of here. So I appreciate your kind words and I know about everything happening on Graceline Street. Y'all supported me and I appreciate it. Reverend Whitaker, don't let them get you upset. Just keep believing in God. They violated my rights. I hear what you're saying with Patrick DeRace. That got a lot to do with the project that we're working on at Hasselbrink. I know Hasselbrink is an asset and we love it. We service the senior citizens. Gus, I know who you is. You go to House of Prayer. You're in the Fifth Ward. Um, I'm going to say something through you, Mr. President, to my colleague in the Fifth Ward. That's Gus. He go to House of Prayer. He talking about that house. I talked to him. I told him it was going to be a meeting. You're all right there. Alonzo Goodman, God bless you, man. You bring tears to my eyes, Goodman, because you were there. You know that Sherry or Steph is lying. And the whole emergency manager order three is based on a fraudulent affidavit. And I can bet you, as sure as I'm sitting here now, they knew it was fraud. Because Mr. Brady signed this handwritten letter. Oh, it's a note. Remember I asked him what was her name? Who acts like that? I pass it.